if you're speeding up your metabolism and you know that your semen volume is going down and you do your uh, semen analysis and it's uh, everything is at the bottom of the range, it might just be that you're selenium deficient and it's not the anabolic androgenic steroids that you're on. Welcome to Vigorous Nutrition. I'm Coach Steve. Don't worry, don't close the video off right away. There is some PED content within, and I would highly advise you to watch it to the end. But I can't possibly discuss everything in this video because it's a very lengthy topic to discuss. We'll discuss micronutrients deficiencies in relation to performance enhancing drugs side effects. Now, I've got a lengthy article that I used to have in the Facebook group, but of course, uh, it wasn't very popular, so I discontinued that. So this 40-page article, I'll publish that on my website and link it down below so you guys can get an overview of, uh, you know, which vitamin, might, which vitamin deficiency or mineral deficiency might give you a false positive on a side effect that's otherwise related to a performance-enhancing drug. And we'll discuss uh, the majority or the most common ones within this video. So hopefully that article will be online because I need to rewrite it a little bit by the time this video goes up and then it should be down below somewhere in the comment section pinned to the top, probably in the same page where the timestamps will be. So let's start with androgenetic alopecia, which is of course very, very popular, even though I don't really suffer from it. Now, is that due to genetics? Is that due to micronutrients? And I think there's a little bit to say for both. So let's start there to give you guys an indication how micronutrient deficiencies can play into androgenetic alopecia and hair loss as well. Now, when you go on performance enhancing drugs and you experience hair loss, it doesn't necessarily have to do with the performance enhancing drug. It doesn't have to do with the mastrone primo or other DHT derivatives or even the testosterone. It might be, again, we're speculating here a little bit, is because these PEDs speed up your metabolism and your micronutrient requirement, and they're otherwise sending these micronutrients to your muscles, which have, you know, a lot of androgen receptors, obviously. So they might steal these micronutrients away from your hair follicles, causing your hair to become thin or brittle or fall out. So the most common micronutrient deficiencies which are associated with hair loss are vitamin D3, zinc, vitamin E, keratin, collagen. And all these micronutrients you can find in food or supplementation. So please, if hair loss is in your family and you're taking performance enhancing drugs, make sure that your micronutrient intake is at least at the top of the daily recommended intake and in most cases, it can be over because there's no negative health uh, associations with slightly over the daily recommended intake or the established upper tolerable limits. So it doesn't hurt. I'm sure it will be beneficial that when you decide to take testosterone or DHT derivatives and you're suffering from hair loss and you're still taking these DHT derivatives because, you know, the, you know, the cosmetic benefits or um, you're doing a, a contest prep and you're, you're basically forced to take them, otherwise you won't be competitive. In those cases, zinc intake, vitamin D3 intake, vitamin E intake, and collagen intake, and uh, making sure you get enough keratin from dietary sources, that has to go up. And you might save yourself a significant amount of hair loss in the process. And now, another thing that you have to realize... So when it comes to metabolism, for example, iodine is very important and get sufficient selenium intake from dietary sources or through supplementation because the three isoforms of the deiodinized enzymes all contain selenium. Now look at this logically. T4 tyroxine and T3 triiodone tyronine. Why do you think there's a T4 and a T3? It's because T4 contains four iodine atoms and T3 only contains three iodine atoms. So in the normal process, you need sufficient iodine intake to produce a significant amount of T4 for the deiodinase enzymes to metabolize one iodine atom off the T4, turning it into the active form T3. So in this natural process, you need a sufficient amount of iodine and selenium to help with stable thyroid conversion and keep your metabolism going because, of course, performance-enhancing drugs, most of them 
increase your metabolism to a certain extent. But when you go on growth hormone and you speed up thyroid conversion, you know, to super physiologic uh, levels, and you're adding T4 supplementation, by adding T4 supplementation, your iodine requirement goes down, but your selenium requirement goes up because you're already taking enough iodine in the form of exogenous T4, and you don't need, you know, extra iodine for normal thyroid conversion in the cases that your metabolism is increased because you're supplementing with T4, which already contains iodine. But by supplementing with T4, your selenium intake needs to go up because the thyroid conversion is sped up, requiring more selenium for the deiodinase enzymes. I know it's a bit of a mouthful, but it, it's very important that you understand this. You can't just throw iodine in the mix. Um, and of course, when you have an iodine deficiency, your metabolism will really take a beating. So when you go on exogenous growth hormone in combination with T4 to keep your metabolism going, selenium intake needs to go up as well. Otherwise, you're slowly creating a selenium deficiency over time, again, by speeding up thyroid conversion, which is going to lead to all kinds of uh, you know, negative side effects like depression, for example, or anxiety. So maybe the anxiety that you're experiencing right now on cycle, if you're on growth hormone and T4 as part of your performance enhancing drug protocol, maybe that anxiety is coming from a selenium deficiency and not from the boldenone <laughs> that you're also taking or the trembolone that you're also taking. Selenium deficiency has also been linked to infertility and of course, reduced semen volume. So again, if you're speeding up your metabolism and you know that your semen volume is going down and you do your uh, semen analysis and it's uh, everything is at the bottom of the range, it might just be that you're selenium deficient and it's not the anabolic androgenic steroids that you're on. You're just <laughs> changing your metabolism and over time, your semen quality is tremendously reduced. So again, when you go on steroids, especially growth hormone, make sure you increase your selenium intake to keep everything functioning, including your fertility, your semen volume, your mood, and perhaps prevent hair loss because selenium deficiency is also linked to hair loss. You see how complicated it gets and that's why I wrote that article. So please, after this video, do yourself a favor and go read that article because you can save yourself a lot of hurts by simply staying on top of your micronutrient intake. Now, another one that's important are the B vitamins and iron because vitamin B2, riboflavin, vitamin B9, folic acid, and vitamin B12, cobalamin, cobalamin, yes, cobalamin, and iron are all utilized in red blood cell production. And most of the anabolic androgenic steroids that we take, and for the guys that are very advanced and that take EPO, of course, red blood cell production is going to be increased. And for that, you need micronutrients. Now, what happens if you don't supplement these micronutrients or make sure you get sufficient amounts, you get these very skewed concentrations on your complete blood count, like a weird mean corpus volume or a weird red cell distribution width or a very low hemoglobin or very high hematocrit or very uh, high red blood cell count, even though the hemoglobin concentration is low. So... If you're taking erythropoic compounds and red blood cell production is increased, so must your micronutrient intake be adjusted. Now, it means that, you know, your hematocrit will still go up and your red blood cell count will still go up and you still need to donate or do a therapeutic phlebotomy. But at least you don't see these weird changes on your mean corpus volume, red cell distribution width, and the overall oxygen carrying capacity of your blood. Because if you don't supplement these micronutrients in or make sure you get sufficient amount, the overall oxygen carrying capacity of your blood is going down. And then you see these weird changes. And then maybe you won't be able to donate or you won't be able to do a therapeutic phlebotomy and you need to come off cycle for everything just to normalize. So please, stay on top of your micronutrient intake. Another deficiency or a combination of deficiencies that's very important to understand when you're using growth hormone at you know, pretty high dosages is that the carpal tunnel syndrome that you're experiencing might not be related to growth hormone at all. It could be related to a taurine and a vitamin B1 thiamine deficiency. 
Now, personally, I've never had carpal tunnel syndrome, even when I was using eight units of pharmaceutical grade growth hormone per day for a couple weeks. Um, I didn't find it to be worth it, um, even though I did look uh, pretty swole <laughs> during that time. And yes, it was legit pharmaceutical grade of the highest purity. I did a serum concentration test where you inject two units of growth hormone intravenously and then check serum concentrations five minutes later, allowing for, you know, a sufficient dispersion. And, uh, you know, my growth hormone concentration came back at over 100 nanograms per deciliter on the several times that I did this test. And it's only on two units. So you don't need to waste 10 units intramuscularly you know, praying that it gets up to 28, 33 nanograms per deciliter. You can just do it IV if you have, um, you know, the balls to go that route. Anyway, so it was legit, but I didn't have any carpal tunnel syndrome because I was staying on top of my taurine and my vitamin B1 thiamine. Because both deficiencies have been linked to poor intracellular and extracellular water distribution, causing all kinds of uh, water retentive side effects. So again, if you're on high dosages of growth hormone or some kind of oral steroid like Anadrol, uh, Dianabol, which is also known to make you hold a significant amount of water, vitamin B1 and taurine is essential and you can save yourself a lot of hurt in the process. Now, of course, high serum concentrations of estradiol promote water retention and of course, poor electrolyte management also contribute to water retention. So you have to look at all of those things. But high doses of growth hormone and carpal tunnel syndrome, they're not a given. They can be easily resolved if you stay on top of your micronutrient intake. Now, the last one that I want to add to this video is, of course, vitamin B6, P5, P, which is essential when you go on the progestogenic 19 NORS. A deficiency in vitamin B6 or insufficient intake will cause a tremendous amount of prolactin secretion. And prolactin secretion, of course, has um, many negative health effects like the promotion of gynecomastia formation or impaired sex drive or libido or reduced refractory periods between ejaculations when you do have a little bit of sex drive going for you or complete erectile dysfunction. Again, it highly depends on how high your serum prolactin concentrations are, whether that's from very high dosages of progestogenic compounds like trembolone, nandrolone, or ment, trestolone, or due to a vitamin B6 deficiency, or maybe you simply need a little bit of cabricoline, I feel that sufficient vitamin B6 intake, well, it's, it's probably super physiological because, you know, you need 200 to 300 milligrams vitamin B6, P5P, just to get sufficient amount of prolactin suppression by increasing serum dopamine concentrations reducing the amount of prolactin secretion from the pituitary gland when you're on progestogenic 19 nors. So that's also one of those essential micronutrients which can prevent a lot of these side effects which were otherwise, you know, associated with 19 nors. So keep all of this in mind. Again, please read the article and dive into it and go over all the micronutrients. Yes, it's 40 pages. Yes, it's a lot of reading material. But I promise you this, the reading will be highly worth it. And I'll leave it at that, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're looking for the most comprehensive guides to bodybuilding pharmacology, you can find those ebooks on my website, vigorousteve.com slash shop. Vigorous crew, you guys are awesome. Thank you always for the likes and the comments. If anybody's looking for personalized advice, you can find the rates to my services on my website as well in the services section, whether those are personalized advice by email, consultations, or coaching, which is available for full-time bodybuilders who are willing to do blood work. Contact me through the contact form. Follow me on Instagram at Vigor Steve. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next video.